May the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Today, we come together to delve into the Word of God for our daily reflection. April 20th, 2024, Saturday of the third week of Easter. A reading from the Acts of Apostles, chapter 9, verses 31 to 42. So the church throughout all Judea and Galilee and Samaria had peace and was being built up. And walking in the fear of the Lord and in the comfort of the Holy Spirit, it multiplied. Now as Peter went here and there among them all, he came down also to the saints who lived at Lydda. There he found a man named Aeneas, bedridden for eight years, who was paralyzed. And Peter said to him, Aeneas, Jesus Christ heals you. Rise and make your bed. And immediately he rose. And all the residents of Lydda and Sharon saw him, and they turned to the Lord. Now there was in Joppa a disciple named Tabitha, which translated means Dorcas. She was full of good works and acts of charity. In those days she became ill and died, and when they had washed her, they laid her in an upper room. Since Lydda was near Joppa, the disciples, hearing that Peter was there, sent two men to him, urging him, Please, come to us without delay. So Peter rose and went with them. And when he arrived, they took him to the upper room. All the widows stood beside him weeping and showing tunics and other garments that Dorcas made while she was with them. But Peter put them all outside and knelt down and prayed. And turning to the body, he said, Tabitha, arise. And she opened her eyes. And when she saw Peter, she sat up. And he gave her his hand and raised her up. Then calling the saints and widows, he presented her alive. And it became known throughout all Joppa, and many believed in the Lord. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorial Psalm. How shall I make a return to the Lord for all the good he has done for me? What shall I render to the Lord for all his benefits to me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. How shall I make a return to the Lord for all the good he has done for me? I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. How shall I make a return to the Lord for all the good he has done for me? O oh Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant, the son of your maidservant. You have loosed my bonds. I will offer to you the sacrifice of thanksgiving and call on the name of the Lord. How shall I make a return to the Lord for all the good he has done for me? A reading from the Holy Gospel. According to John chapter 6, verses 60-69, when many of his disciples heard it, they said, This is a hard saying. Who can listen to it? But Jesus, knowing in himself that his disciples were grumbling about this, said to them, Do you take offense at this? Then what if you were to see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? It is the Spirit who gives life. The flesh is no help at all. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and life, but there are some of you who do not believe. For Jesus knew from the beginning who those were who did not believe, and who it was who would betray him. And he said, This is why I told you that no one can come to me unless it is granted him by the Father. After this, many of his disciples turned back and no longer walked with him. So Jesus said to the twelve, Do you want to go away as well? Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life, and we have believed and have come to know that you are the Holy One of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Gospel Reflection In this passage from John's Gospel, we witness a pivotal moment in Jesus' ministry where some of his disciples struggle with his teachings, 
leading to a significant departure from his circle of disciples. The phrase, this is a hard saying, who can listen to it, reflects the disciples' difficulty in comprehending the depth and spiritual significance of Jesus' words. Jesus responds by addressing their doubts, pointing out that the spirit, not the flesh, is the source of true life. His teachings are not merely literal, but carry profound spiritual meaning, requiring faith and openness to the guidance of the Holy Spirit for full understanding. The mention of Jesus knowing from the beginning those who did not believe and who would betray him underscores his divine knowledge and the challenges he faced, even among those closest to him. Despite this, Jesus presents a powerful truth belief and the ability to come to him are gifts granted by the father the turning point comes when many disciples decide to leave unable to reconcile their understanding with jesus's teachings jesus unfazed by this exodus turns to the 12 and asks if they too want to leave peter's response is a declaration of profound faith and loyalty he acknowledges jesus as the source of eternal life and affirms their belief in him as the Holy One of God. Peter's words echo a deep conviction that transcends momentary doubts and challenges. His response represents the core of true discipleship, unwavering faith in Jesus as the Son of God, the bearer of eternal truths, and the pathway to salvation. This passage prompts us to reflect on our own response to the teachings of Jesus. Do we struggle with concepts that challenge our understanding? Are we willing to trust in Jesus even when his words seem difficult or require a leap of faith? Like Peter, may we affirm our belief in Jesus as the Holy One of God, clinging to him as the source of spiritual life and eternal truths amidst life's uncertainties and complexities. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, in moments of doubt and confusion, Grant us the wisdom to seek understanding through the guidance of your Holy Spirit. Help us to trust in your teachings even when they challenge our preconceptions or seem difficult to grasp. Strengthen our faith, O Lord, and grant us the courage to remain steadfast in following Jesus, the Holy One of God, who holds the words of eternal life. May we never waver in our trust in Him, knowing that he is the source of truth and salvation. Jesus, we place our trust in you, believing in your divine wisdom and guidance. Help us to walk in your ways and to proclaim your truth with confidence and conviction. In your holy name we pray, Jesus, I trust in you. Amen. Thank you for joining us in today's reflection. Subscribe for daily spiritual nourishment and inspiration. And don't forget to like, share, and comment on the video. May God's blessings be with you always.